Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It is Ulan Gaming, and I am here with another video because we have our uh, very first. Uh, it, we have our very first uh, patch for Elven Ring since the day one patch, uh, with full of new balance changes, bug fixes, and the like. And we will be going over them in this video. Ah, so, uh, with that out of the way, there's not too much to... Uh, th I, I don't have anything uh, prior to getting into this uh, for us to talk about, so let's get into it. Yeah. Uh, first, we have additional elements added. Added a function to uh, record an icon and the name of an NPC on the map when you encounter that NPC. So, I've actually seen this uh, in action. It's, uh, it, it is a thing where uh, if you gloss over a site of grace, in addition to saying the site of grace, it will also list any NPCs there, uh, which will make it significantly easier to follow NPC quest lines across this very, very vast game because you no longer need to wander around aimlessly and hope you run into them. You will now just be able to hover your cursor over each site of grace when you're looking for an NPC and pray that their name shows up. Uh, they also added an, an, a new NPC, Jarbern. Uh, so Jarbern is going to be located in the Jarberg, and while I don't know the specifics of his questline, I do know that there is an interaction uh, with him after you have successfully completed Alexander's questline. You will receive an item that, after giving it to Jarbern, will result in you getting a new talisman. So make sure that if you have completed Alexander's questline, uh, you turn that into Jarbern to get your final reward. Added new quest phases for the following NPCs. Dialos, which I'm not sure who Dialos is, uh, I'm gonna be honest. Uh, Nefeli Lu, this is a very big one. So, uh, for reference, I'm doing a uh, Let's Play of the game on my channel, uh, but the actual character that the Let's Play is following has already completed the game. Uh, the Let's Play is just far behind because I'm only posting an hour per day. Um, but Nefeli was an NPC that actually kind of like pissed me off because after a point I was following her quest line and then it just stopped and I didn't know why, I didn't know where it went and she just never changed her position for the rest of the game. Uh, so now having uh, the, the, this, this fact that she will now uh, progress in her quest line is going to be something that is very great for me and uh, is definitely going to alleviate one of the uh, criticisms I had of this game uh, that I t discussed at the very end during the end credits. Uh, Kenneth Heights is the uh, heir to Limgrave. Uh, you will find him near the Third Church of Marika, and he, will, uh, it, he has a very short but sweet quest line for you to follow. Uh, it, it, now, there is further, now there is more of it to do, so uh, there you go. And then Gatekeeper Gustock, I have no idea who that is. I'll probably Google him after this. <laughs> Added some new sum uh, summonable NPCs in multiple situations. So for those of you who are struggling with bosses, uh, there will be more NPCs for you to summon throughout the game uh, to help assist you with the bosses that you are stuck on. Increase the number of patterns of objects players can imitate when using the Mimic Veil. This is obviously just a good thing in general, as uh, you always want the, 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 the Mimic Veil, which is this game's version of Chameleon, uh, to to be something that not everybody can recognize, so having more diversity will make it harder to recognize. Uh, added night background music for some open field area. Okay, cool. Uh, bugs fixed. Prevented a bug that prevented summoning NPCs from taking damage in some boss battles. Didn't know that was a thing, but glad it's gone. Fixed a bug that sometimes prevented the player from obtaining an item after a boss battle. Again, didn't know that was a thing because it never happened to me personally, but I am glad that it is gone. Fixed a bug that causes dialogue to be skipped when talking to NPCs and using custom key configurations. This is actually something that I ran into uh, one time. Uh, Nefeli, uh, uh, an NPC I previously talked about, uh, at one point um, I was talking to her in the village of Albinarix, and the second line in her dialogue skipped by way too fast for me to read it, despite me not actually pressing any buttons. And when, even when I repeated it to make sure, it continuously skips that one line of dialogue. Uh, so I'm glad that this is happening. Uh, we'll be able to listen to more of the NPCs as we play through the game. Uh, fix a bug that causes the player to freeze when riding. I do believe this is the bug where when you call Torrents and then you jump up to ride him, sometimes you will get stuck uh, in the air. Uh, and you will eventually die to a falling animation. 
Uh, you will eventually die to falling damage uh, after a, after about 30 seconds of straight falling, uh, despite the fact that you're just floating in midair. Uh, so glad to see that that is gone. Uh, fixed a bug that causes arcane to scale incorrectly for some weapons. Now this one is huge because this is going to affect a lot of builds. So for those of you who do not know, a lot of the arcane scaling weapons in the game do not actually scale. Uh, there was there is a bug associated with them, uh, and it, mo it and uh, while weapon if your weapon has scaling with other stats, particularly faith and intelligence, then the arcane scaling will usually work. Uh, for example, the Dragon Communion uh, seal has uh, has functional arcane scaling. However, uh, swords. Uh, it, however, weapons that have just arcane scaling or arcane with strength and dex, uh, a lot of the times they just don't have scaling at all. Um, for example, the uh, straight sword. Uh, that with the telekinetic power that you get uh, after a cave in Kaled, or the great sword that you get for killing, uh, I think his name is Braid in Shaded Castle. Uh, both of those weapons had zero scaling. Uh, this also applies to things like Margot's great sword, as well as uh, the dagger Reduvia that you get at the very beginning of the game for killing an invader, as well as River of Blood, a katana you get in Mountaintop of the Giants. Uh, those two in particular all were already really good weapons because they applied lots of bleed. So uh, be ready. Uh, so the adding arcane scaling that is functional to those weapons is going to take uh, bleed builds from being already one of the best build types in the game to being probably the absolute best uh, build type in this game, assuming your and uh, assuming your enemy is susceptible to bleed in any capacity. Uh, in situation where the player cannot contain more than two talisman patches, add a talisman pouch uh, to Twin Maiden Husk Shop's lineup. Okay, so um, this is a situation where um, you can uh, you can accidentally uh, gimp yourself by by not. Uh, getting your extra talisman. So for those of you who don't know, you start with one talisman. Uh, you start with one talisman slot. You get a second talisman slot after killing Market. You get the third talisman slot from the Finger Reader after you have a uh, after you have attained two great runes, most likely Godric's and Renala, given uh, their 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 difficulty settings and areas. Uh, and then the fourth one you get after killing Margot. I do believe. No, no, it's uh, not Margaret. It's Godfrey. It's Godfrey that you get for your fourth one. Um, however, there was a bug associated in the game where progressing too far, uh, where uh, if you never talked to the finger reader uh, to get your third talisman, and then you progress too far into the game and got your third talisman through Godfrey, uh, then you would go back to the finger reader and she would not give you uh, your third, your extra talisman pouch, gimping you and keep leaving you stuck at three talisman pouches in, at three talisman slots instead of four. So now, if that happens, you'll be able to buy uh, the talisman from the twin maiden husks in the uh, round table holds. Fix a bug that prevented the user from warping to sites of grace from the map at the end of the game. Uh, this is something that I never noticed, and I am at the end of the game. But regardless, it's fixed, so that is cool. Uh, fixed a bug that prevents the player from moving to the next area after the battle of the fire giant. Again, not something I ran into, but glad it's fixed. Fixed a bug which causes some weapons to have incorrect scaling after strengthening. Uh, same, same thing as before. Fixed a bug which causes some weapons to not use stat scaling. Ah, okay, so I guess that was a separate bug then with the arcane weapons. Uh, but it, it was most notable with the arcane weapons, I, I noticed. Uh, the, those two straight swords in particular... Uh, the, those two swords in particular, the straight sword and great sword, uh, were the, the were the most obvious ones that I noticed because I was using a build that is using the arcane stat to scale my uh, my, my 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 spells, and so uh, that bug was very very annoying for me. But I'm glad to know that I am now going to be able to use the weapons that I want to use. Uh, fixed hangups in certain occasions, sure. Uh, fixed a bug which incorrectly displays multiplayer area boundaries when playing online. Okay, uh, that's that's cool. Uh, fixed a bug that allows players to activate the Erd Tree Great Shield's weapon skill without absorbing an attack using a special combination of item and incantation. 
Uh, yes. Uh, so the Erd Tree Great Shield, this is something that stings a little bit for me. I knew it was going to get patched. I knew it was coming. Um, so I actually am using a, a shield only build right now in my third playthrough of the game, just, just for fun. And, um, the Erd Tree Great Shield was one of the, the weapons I got as early as possible, uh, because the Erd Tree Great Shield had a bug associated with it where, uh, you could, uh, use its reflection ability to shoot the projectile from self-harm, specifically through self-burn, uh, uh, through, uh, the self-burn one, uh, the, the, the spell where you burn yourself and everyone around you, and through the use of poisoning yourself. If you were to use Fetid Pots, for example, or um, if you were to use Fetid Pots, for example, or if you were to eat a raw meat dumpling from a, from a jar. Uh, so unfortunately, this, this is going to get fixed. It was one of my favorite things to do in PvP. Uh, it is a little toxic, and it is obviously a bug and an exploit, but, you know, still haven't... I, I decided to have fun with it while I could, uh, but that is no longer a thing. Fix a bug which causes fires, deadly sin, incantation to have a different effect. This is one that I ran into. Um, so people used a bug to uh, uh, to replace fire the actual fire uh, for fire's deadly sin with another effect, uh, because there are several effects in this game, uh, there, there are several status effects in this game that are attached to fire damage. For example, Madness. Madness uh, is attached to fire damage, and so if you wanted to, you could use a bug to make dead uh, fire's deadly sin deal madness to people in addition to its normal damage. Uh, but more importantly, this also applies to curse, and I had an invasion where somebody used fire's deadly sin and then ran into me and my fellow invader and cursed us both in about three seconds, and we were unable to get away from it. Uh, so the fact that that is fixed is something that is uh, a, a very, very needed change for the health of this PvP, so f for the health of the, the health of the PvP in this game. Fixed a bug with the Ash of War, Ashes of War determination and Royal Knight's Resolve, where the damage buff would also apply to other weapons without that skill. So this is something that uh, speedrunners were using. Uh, to in combination with Horfrost Stomp and the knight, uh, the Sword of Knights and Flame, in order to uh, boost the weapon art of the uh, use the the Ash of War on one weapon to boost the Ash of War on the other, and practically one shot bosses. Uh, the the damage capability that you achieved through the use of Determination and uh, Sword of Knights and Flame, for example, was unparalleled, and you could very, very easily go to late-game areas and one-shot everything in your path at very low level. Um, so this this right here is a direct nerf to uh, speedrunners, and I highly doubt that any speedrun of this game is going to achieve anywhere near the speed that we saw at the very beginning uh, within these first few weeks. Uh, adjusted the visual effects of the un uh, uh, the unseen form spell, uh, so that is of course the your hidden body spell. Uh, apparently, its visual effect is slightly different. Wh whoop de fucking do. Uh, deleted the ragged armor set from the game, which was mistakenly obtainable in the previous patch. Oh, they're taking out armor sets. Lame. Uh, fixed an I a bug that causes some hostile NPCs to drop for calling finger remedies. Okay, I don't see why that. Uh, I, I don't see why that needed to be patched out, but uh, it, regardless, it got patched out. Fixed a bug that causes incorrect sound effects to play in some situations. Fixed a bug that causes visual animation hitboxes to not be displayed correctly on some maps. Okay, this one is big. So, um, this you might look at this and think that this is not actually that big, but it is, again, a change that is targeted to speedrunners. Um, so... Uh, for uh, for those of you who, uh, for those of you who don't know, there is a way to cheese a couple of the bosses in the game, uh, notably uh, notably Moog's second fight, uh, Margot and uh, Horalu. Uh, all three of those bosses and possibly others have bugs where you can enter the boss room without going through the fog gate. Uh, and the reason this is important is because going through the fog gate is what triggers uh, the boss's AI. Like, interacting with the fog gate is what triggers the boss's AI for him to start moving. So if you can get into the boss room uh, without, using, without going through the fog gate, the boss will just stand there without AI and let you beat it to death. 
Um, now, while this won't be fixed for the Moog fight, unless we see a patch note about them moving some of the terrain, uh, this is important for the Margot and uh, Horalu fights, because for those ones, uh, how the bug worked was you would get in a very specific spot, quit out, and then load back into your game, and what this would allow you to do is walk through the fog wall before it has a chance to activate its hitbox and block you, forcing you to interact with it. So you would essentially just phase through the fog wall without interacting with it. Uh, so this, once again, is a bug that is directly aimed at speedrunners and will prevent them from cheesing this boss along with many other players who have tried to perfect this strategy. Uh, fix bugs which cause incorrect visual beha and behavior for some enemies. Okay, cool. Uh, fixed a bug that causes incorrect stat parameter on the for some armor. Okay. Text fixes, other performance improvement and bug fixes. Balance changes, increased the drop rate of smithing stones for some enemies. This is something that I am very happy for. Uh, so unfortunately, throughout the uh, throughout the game, uh, smithing stones are, you need a, you need a lot of smithing stones in order to get your weapon to plus twenty five in this game, and they are very difficult to come across. I find like yeah, you can buy them, but not till the very late late game. Um, and the drop rates were always so low that I always, always found it much easier uh, and more reliable to upgrade somber smithing stone weapons compared to normal weapons, uh, which is generally the opposite in these Souls games. Uh, throughout the entire game uh, of my first playthrough, I got four weapons to plus nine with somber smithing stones, and I only got one weapon to plus 25 uh, with normal smithing stones. So this is definitely a positive change. I hope that it is a dramatic one and that it is going to be easier to upgrade normal weapons. Added smithing stone to some early game shop lineup. Fantastic. So early merchants are gonna be more likely to sell, to sell smithing stones. Uh, this is definitely going to help the very early game, especially when you're trying to make your way up to market. Uh, increased shields effectiveness. I'm assuming that this is referring to the stability stat for most shields. This is a very positive change uh, for me specifically because I am running, as I mentioned before, a shields only build. Uh, but I actually don't know how necessary this is because I find generally that shields in this game are much better than they were in, for example, Dark Souls 3, and that the uh, the, the shields to dodge to, 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 to dodge balance is quite w well struck in this game. But evidently, they got buffed, and I am not going to complain about that. So um, th this is honestly something that I am really happy for, uh, because one of the things I really like about Elden Ring, as opposed to Dark Souls 3, is that the tank class of character is viable again. Uh, previously in Dark Souls 3, it was very difficult to make an effective tank build, uh, because medium rolling was a necessity, and armor did not really do much for your actual defenses. But in this game, armor matters a lot more, and she shields are a lot better, so that, that is very good. Increase the damage for all offensive crackpot items. Yes! Okay, so crackpot items uh, were really good in the early game, but fell off very, very quickly, and I honestly found them to be rather useless throughout the game. Uh, past the first few areas. So seeing this is going to be it is very good. It's going to make item only builds much better. Uh, and it, th th this is just one of my favorite changes I've read here. Uh, increase the damage for the following items. Spark aromatic po Yes, they're, ju they're just buffing a lot of the consumable items. Increase the effect duration. Uh, yep, yep. Increase the he HP healing for Torrent when using the following items. Roa Raisin, Sweet Raisin, Frozen Raisin. Fantastic. So, uh, Torrent is, of course, your horse. You need to feed him raisins when he's injured to heal him up. They never heal him that much. Uh, also, I really wish that the HP bar for Torrent would actually show up when you heal him, because it doesn't, so I don't know how much I'm actually healing him for. But... Uh, regardless, this is a positive change. Reduced FP cons uh, consumption and increase the damage of the following sorceries. Glintstone, Comet Shard, Comet, Night Comet. Okay, so all your Comet Shards uh, are better now. They have they cost less FP, they do more damage. Uh, increase the... Oh, wow. Okay, so um, this is basically just saying use sorceries. They were good before, now they're excellent. Uh, it, uh, FP consumption cost reduction for all of these. Damage increase for these. Both of those for these. Uh, oh, range and speed of Great Glintstone Shard Rays for here. So yeah, just in general, across the board, most sorceries in the game, or at, le at least half of them it looks like, uh, have been buffed. So that, that's, a very, that's a very good change. 
decrease to Ash of War, Horfrost Stomp's damage, and increase cast time. Fantastic. Horfrost Stomp was blatantly OP. Uh, it is something that I, I, I was separated from the community when I played through this game on my main character and discovered Horfrost Stomp's uh, ridiculousness on my own and started using it throughout most of the game. Uh, unfortunately, realizing later that I was kind of cheesing the game. Uh, but uh, regardless, this is a very, very good change because Horfrost Stomp was ridiculous, and so now it's going to be less damaging and slower. Uh, it's still probably going to be very good, but it looks like now Horfrost Stomp's primary purpose is probably going to be to apply Frostbite uh, quickly because Frostbite is much better in this game than it was in Dark Souls 3. Uh, increased Ash of War Bloody Slashes inflicts self-damage while slightly lowering the damage and increasing cast time. Okay, so Bloody Slash was a very, very, very powerful, uh, another very powerful Ash of War. Uh, you would use it in combination with a very heavy weapon uh, to inflict a large amount of damage with a decent amount of range very, very quickly uh, at the cost of 60 HP. Uh, so now, which is like nothing, so now the self-inflict damage is going to go up, uh, the damage is slightly lower, and the cast time is going to be increased, meaning it's going to be telegraphed more in PvP, you're going to be able to avoid Bloody Slash much easier. Uh, decreased weapon skill, Sword of Night and Flames damage. Yes! Okay, so yeah, this is another thing that's not just targeting speedrunners, but targeting the average player, because I see this sword all the time when I invade. I am an avid invader, I love invading. Uh, sword of Night and Flame, um, this weapon I see every two to three invasions. It is ridiculous. Um, the It is obviously the straight sword that has freaking soul stream as its weapon art, as well as a massive fire area of effects that is capable of one-shotting you. Uh, and through the use of uh, the other things we mentioned earlier, able, almost capable of one-shotting some bosses and absolutely capable of one-shotting others. Uh, so, Sword of Night and Flame, just it just says damage decrease. So, yeah, um, that is a very 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 positive change i'm glad to see that for the sake of this not only uh not only this game's like pve but for the pvp as well uh increased fp consumption and lower duration for ash of war barricade shield yes so barricade shield was just another blatantly op ash of war uh, this sh uh, th this one right here would uh, boost your shield's stability and uh, the number of attacks that would bounce off it to a ridiculous degree, trivializing most bosses in this game. Uh, uh, change FP consumption timing on Ash of War prelates charge. Not really sure uh, wh which one that is, uh, but regardless, that is a change. Decreased the damage of spirit summoned when using the item Mimic Tear Ash and changed the spirit's behavior pattern. Okay, so Mimic Tear was tied for the title of best summon uh, of best summon in the game uh, because it it spun summoned a clone of you with all of your uh, spells, your weapons, and your items equipped. Uh, it was incredibly powerful. Uh, it chunked bosses for it chunked bosses for almost as much damage as you and had far more HP than you and was extremely aggressive. Uh, against bosses, keeping their AI tracked on the Mimic tier pretty much the entire time. Uh, so it looks like the damage is no longer going to be anywhere near as significant as you, meaning uh, Mimic tier builds are going to be probably based around applying status effects more than doing damage now. Uh, and then they change the spirit's behavior pattern. I can't say for certain, but I am assuming this means that they are going to be a little less aggressive and constantly on the boss's ass. Uh, and what this means is that um, the, uh, the, the this change is going to make the uh, unprecedented best uh, summon in the game absolutely the Great Shield Soldier Ashes and not the Mimic tier. Uh, so upgrade that one, you fucks. Uh, other enemy and weapon balance changes. So uh, that is going to be it for our balance overview. Thank you guys very much for watching. Have a great day. Like and subscribe if you enjoy this kind of content, and have and uh, goodbye.